Hey everybody, so uh, it's June and with nesting season still underway, one of the questions that comes up is, oh no, I discovered a house wren in the yard or there's a house wren and it's looking in my bluebird box, what do I do? Um, if you are new to birding or you just stumbled across this channel and was giving this video a try, just for context, a uh, house wren is a very little bird with a very pointy beak. They are native to the US and they are cavity nesting birds, which means that they uh, nest in uh, nest boxes or birdhouses or tree holes. One of the things that a house wren is known for though is going in, invading an active box, and if there's eggs in it, they will poke the eggs and throw them out of the box. Or if there's little baby nestlings in there, they will even spear <laughs> the babies with their, uh, that's a little dramatic, but they will. They will poke it with their beak and and toss the babies out of the nest box. And then what they're gonna try and do is start to build over and take over that nest. Uh, the other thing about house wrens, and I'll get into this a little more, is that they're also known for building dummy nests. So they'll build multiple nests uh, in different locations. And I think it's usually the male who builds the nest and then the female finishes it once she finds the location that she is happiest with. So now we come into what do we do if there's a house run in the yard and it's coming into one of your active boxes. Uh, number one, a house run is native. So you kind of want to protect this. You don't want to, you don't want to hurt the bird. You don't want to trap the bird or anything like that. Uh, they are native. So trapping or anything like that would be illegal. Um, I'm of course not going to actively encourage house wrens to nest while I have an active bluebird nest or chickadee nest going on, but at the same time, once that's happening, you do as conservationists want to protect them. And if you are managing birds, you should have a heart for conservation. Ooh, you should have a heart for conservation. So, um, what what your immediate steps would be is to add another nest box into the yard and it doesn't have to be very big um, I, I can put some links on um, in the description another bluebird nest is great big is always good and then you have an extra nest box for the future and then after that um, you want to optimize your locations so one of the things with bluebirds is they tend to like more open areas um, and house friends tend to like uh, tree lines or um, shaded places. So one of the things uh, with my neighbor actually behind me, she has a back porch and she has a nest box hanging and every year she gets a house run. One of the reasons I think the house run likes that location is because it is kind of sheltered. They like to be hidden. It kind of gives them the feel of that protection of a tree line and they don't like to fly too far out from a tree line. That's not to say that they won't, but that does help. So if you change the location of the box to where you have it optimal for a bluebird, open areas, a little bit of shrubbery, um, some perches, but it's more open, that's helpful. And then a shaded spot near a tree line or near a bush line is going to be really helpful. If you don't have a tree line or bushes, again, you, you might wanna see if you have like an eave or a porch or something like that to hang it under. So it kind of has that sheltered feel. So the next thing is you might be waiting for your bluebird to lay an egg or your tree swallow or, or what have you. Uh, and the reason I bring that up is because you you can add a thing called a wren guard. And I do have a video, I'll put a link below on how to make a wren guard. But it's basically a hood that covers the entry hole of the nest box. And um, you can put that over, but the, the key is adding the wren guard after the first egg is laid and that prevents nest abandonment and things like that. Um, so while you're waiting for that first egg to be laid, um, hopefully optimizing uh, the nest box locations is going to help. And then after that, once the wren starts building their nest, um, let it get to a certain height. They'll fill the box. So let it get to a certain height and then you can remove sticks. Now, if it's an active wren nest with eggs, don't remove anything that's an active nest and it would be illegal to remove anything. But because wrens are known for building dummy nests and things like that, if it's under construction, it should be okay to start removing sticks and things. I'm not saying destroy the whole nest. I'm just saying remove a few sticks and that's gonna keep the house wren busy. He's gonna keep rebuilding and rebuilding and adding. And that buys you time for your bluebird or chickadee or tree swallow or whatever you have. Um, that'll buy them time to get that egg down. Um, and once they have an egg down and you have a wren guard up, 
The other thing you could do is add a Sparrow Spooker. I find that doubling up on deterrence like that really helps out. So add the Sparrow Spooker. Yeah, it's geared towards Sparrow deterrence, but I find that, you know, these things always help deter any other invading bird. So add that. You, you've now got your bluebird settled and you can now let your house friend build in peace. And again, we don't want to discourage them at this point. We want to let them have babies because again, they are native birds. Something else to keep in mind when maintaining peace between bluebirds or chickadees or tree swallows and then your house friends is the distance between nest boxes. So currently um, behind me is my neighbor's nest box and I, I want to say it might be about 30 feet 30 or 40 feet away from my bluebird box. And that seems to work just fine. Um, I have another decoy box around the side of the yard. And um, every year a wren builds in that nest and they're currently building right now. And that seems to be okay. Um, so the distance there is about 30 or 40 feet. If you have 20 feet, I'd say work with that. If you're getting any closer, um, you could run into troubles but that's not to say you don't try, it's just gonna make it maybe a little harder. Again, try to optimize. Um, another thing I have found is that uh, a house friend may become curious about the bluebird nest box. So despite optimization and stuff like that, they may go to investigate. Um, I, I saw this happen very recently and my current male bluebird is very aggressive and thankfully he let the wren escape with his life, but um, that also helps is, you know, your own birds are going to protect their nest too. So if the nest is under construction and the wren starts to investigate and your bluebirds discover it, they're probably going to go in and scare the daylights out of that wren and hopefully they'll go back to the other nest that they uh, were working on. So these are some tactics to maintain peace. Here's the big thing to keep in mind though. Um, these are wild birds that we're talking about, and this is nature that we're talking about. So anything can happen. Um, I was in a Facebook group and this was one of the, one of the very seasoned um, bluebird monitors brought this up. These are wild birds. They're unpredictable. You can only do so much and they're going to do the rest. So you can put the wren guard up, you can distance everything, you can optimize everything, and you may just have a bad year and that wren's going to get in your box and it's just awful. If this is a bad year and something happens, I don't want that to discourage you from maintaining nest boxes and monitoring nest boxes in years to come. Sometimes this stuff is really heartbreaking, but cavity birds really need our help. So um, keep with it, do your best. Um, I, I, in that same Facebook group, I likened it to being sheriffs in the Wild West. You know, we're, we're here to protect the citizens and keep the peace, but you know, fights break out in the bar and that's, that's what happens. So, um, I hope these tips help. This is about the best you can do. And, um, after that, you just kind of have to let nature do what nature is going to do. If this was a house sparrow or something like uh, a starling with an invasive bird, that's a whole different um, tactic of management. There's not really a lot of peace that can be maintained, but I have had peace between house wrens and bluebirds, so it can be achieved. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if it was, please give it a like. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm going to keep trying to pump out more videos for you guys um, with just bird information and questions that come up, and I really appreciate the support. Thanks!